some time. Welcome. Tonight we are doing a saddle comfort clinic. So we're going to be discussing some issues, uh, that, common issues that people have with the, their bike seats. And not just the issues, but some, some possible solutions. Uh, a little history. I'm Cynthia Stewart. I have been with Bike Barn. Next month will be 15, yes, next month will be 15 years. I've been a cyclist since the mid 90s. I started off just riding with my son, very recreational around the neighborhood and quickly dove right into it, uh, upgrading that hybrid to a, a, a nice road bike, a nice mountain bike. I've gotten into cyclocross. I've, raced, I've done a triathlon, um, but now you know, I've, I've raced a little bit, uh, but now I am pretty much a recreational rider. But I manage the Custom Fit Studio for Bike Barn, and the studio's been open since 2008. I'm one of the first in the country to have, first bike shops in the country to have a dedicated Custom Fit Studio, dedicated to making sure your bike fits you. So. Kudos to our, our owners, Lee and Neil, for having the insight to do that. And uh, you know, fortunately, I've been, I've been working in the studio since 2007, or no, 2000, I've been doing this since 2007, working in the studio since 2000, late 2008, early 2009. And um, I love it. It's an awesome, uh, awesome feeling to be able to help cyclists enjoy their bicycle more. So let's get on to why we were here, why we are here tonight. And thank you all for joining us again virtually. Um, I think the day is coming soon that we will all be able to finally do these clinics live. And that's, I really miss having people here in the studio to talk to, a whole different ball game speaking to the camera. But, so we're gonna talk about common saddle issues. And I'm assuming that the people that have joined us this evening must have some issues and, or either that or you're pretty bored and had nothing else to do, but I'm assuming that you had some saddle, saddle bike seat issues. The common ones that I hear people complain about is chafing, which chafing is just a friction, uh, something rubbing on, on, on your skin. Um, and, and you think of cycling as a Sport of repetitive motion, where especially if you're a road cyclist, and you know tonight this applies to road or mountain tri bikes. It doesn't matter. Everyone has. I've seen every one of all types of bikes with saddle issues. But the chafing is can be caused that repetitive motion. You think about our pedal stroke being 90 RPMs a minute times 60 minutes times an hour, two hours, three hours. You can easily spin 5,400 pedal strokes on a, on a ride. And if you've got something that's not in, in place, that can cause a lot of issues. Another thing that people will talk about or complain about is numbness. And that can either be on your soft tissue or even on your ischial tuberosities or the sit bones or, or and points in between. So I'll hear, hear people that actually have issues with things going numb. And I will just say that's not healthy. We don't want it um, for men or women to experience that. And just general soreness. Um, some soreness is to be expected if you're a new cyclist and uh, getting used to a bike. But if it's something that's lingering for months and you've been riding consistently, that's not something that you should have to endure. I know a lot of you are tough cyclists out there, tough girls, or you don't want to complain. But some, a lot of these issues can be resolved with uh, the proper equipment and proper fit. And so you're not proving anything by be, trying to be tough uh, when it comes to saddle issues. And then the worst I hear about are saddle sores. And a saddle sore can be anything from something that looks like a pimple to a boil to, I had a customer the other day telling me, I sometimes hear some pretty graphic things, but he had, something attached to his sit bone underneath the skin that was the size of a cigar. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, how did you let it get to that point? So um, none of that, should I not have said that? None of that is um, um, something that you should, should be overlooking or letting go. Uh, sometimes I'll have people that have some, they'll, they'll complain of something like a bruise or, a little bump or 
in, ingrown hairs. Ingrown hairs can be an issue as well. And again, it can be very bothersome. And uh, let, if you let things go, it can get to the point where you might end up having to see a medical doctor, which those are delicate areas to have to go and have some attention um, from a doctor. So we, try to, we will try to prevent that. So basically to understand how, what causes saddle issues, I wanted to go over a little bit of the anatomy and talk about the differences that men and women have aside from the obvious. Uh, our pelvises, if we think of the, the whole pelvic structure are different. Women have wider ischial tuberosities, which is our sit bones. The, the female pelvis is larger and broader because we're designed for childbearing. Now that's not to say every woman is bigger than a man and not that um, not every man is, is smaller than a woman's uh, pelvis. I've seen the whole, ga the whole range. But on, on average, women's sit bones are wider than a male. And then the pubic arch is shallower just because our bones are spread apart a little bit wider, so that arch is a little narrower, which can pose issues too. We may end up having that pelvic bone being on the seat and causing pressure. <clears throat> so the reason that women's saddles are different is uh, oftentimes just because of the width of our sit bones. And the reason I bring that up is because so many people don't realize that you need to have a seat that fits your anatomy. If it doesn't fit your anatomy and you just try to make it work, I'm assuming you're here because you've tried to make something work and it's given you issues. So that doesn't really work out very well. So here in the studio, we have a device that we use that will measure the width of your sit bones. And I don't know if you can see on the slide, that's not a great picture, but it's a gel device that will have you sit on and the sit bones will be centered on the gel and it will leave two little indentations where your sit bones are or your ischial tuberosities and we'll measure that from point to point the width and that's a great way to get a starting point of what saddle you should you should what what saddle to start with a recommendation of a starting point many people think okay my sit bones are 125 millimeters and I need a saddle 125 millimeters. So that's not the case. If, if your set, sit bones are 125 millimeters, you need a little bit of room to let the, your sit bones have some real estate so that your saddle needs to be a little bit wider than that. But that's a great non-invasive way. We have you sit on something that measures the width of your sit bones because that's a, that's a starting point for recommendations on saddles. So how are we going to improve your comfort on your seat? So like I said, we start with measuring the width of your sit bones. So that leads us then to picking the proper width for you. Saddles come in widths from 130 millimeters wide all the way up to, well, some of the commuter seats go up to 265, which is a big range, big difference. If you're a road, road cyclist or a mountain biker, most of the saddles that, that we will use are between 130, which I don't use as many of those, but 143, 45, up to 155 is about the average range. But if you don't know the width of your sit bones, you're just taking a guess in the, bar, in the dark as to what, what width you need. And I, what I didn't say about sit bone width, I can't look at you and say, oh, you're probably gonna need this width of saddle. It has nothing to do with your outward appearances. I'm not a tiny petite person and um, you know, so somebody with maybe bigger bones is gonna ride a, a, maybe you'd think would have a wider saddle, but I've seen people who are rail thin and little small petite uh, thin bones and they, their sit bones could be wider and need a wider saddle. So it's not something we can look at. So there's not only different widths of saddle, different shapes of saddles. And you've seen everything from a flat saddle to ones that flip up in the back to some that are even curvier or more rounded. 
all those different shapes are designed to fit your undercarriage and we're under, or all of us have a different undercarriage. Looking at, or during a physical assessment, during the fit, pre-fit assessment, I'm going to look at your spinal structure. And that gives me an indicator of what type or shape of saddle might work best for you. So after I've measured your sit bones, I'm now also looking at your spinal structure. So some of us have a little more curvature showing that our pelvis is more tilted, which that can give, um, that might, that is an indicator of what type of saddle that might work better for you. So all of those things come into play, different shapes, different um, widths, and getting the right one for you is, is, is critical. The next thing that I always look at is leveling your seat. Now, if you've got a flat saddle, we start with it in a level position. And most, many people I see, if they're having issues, especially if soft tissue or, or parts of your anatomy that are on the front part of the saddle are going numb or tingling or having pressure, I will see people drop the nose of the seat to where it's uh, nose down. Unfortunately, that may temporarily solve an issue, but what happens is if your seat's two nose down, you start sliding forward. And then as you slide forward, you start pushing back because you're sliding forward on the seat and now your sit bones aren't on the seat. You're, you're being supported by your either perineum or, or soft tissue. And you start pushing back. Well, then all that pushing back, your shoulders and hands start getting fatigued and numb. So it's a, a very bad chain reaction. So leveling a saddle. Now, many of today's saddles are, are not flat. I'm going to grab one here. Can, can we see? So many of today's saddles are not flat. You can see how this flips up at the back. With a seat that has a flip up at the back, we want this front part of the seat to be level. Can you see that? So the center third of the saddle should be level. This seat, if you put it level tip to tail, you're going to have some pressure on places where you don't want pressure. So know how a seat should be installed. There's a lot of unusual seats out there that people have tried as, you know, when you get desperate and have issues uh, with your undercarriage, we're going to try some unusual things. And the, the, there's saddles out there that are noseless, and, um, but people will try different weird saddle. So some of them may have installation guides. So do follow that if your seat has an installation guide. But just know that if a seat isn't totally level, that if you put a level on it and try to level up tip to tail, it's probably not going to be comfortable. So then the other thing that can affect, the next thing that can affect your saddle comfort and ways that uh, you can improve it is the height. We always think that seat height is going to affect and does affect our comfort in our knees and our power ability to produce, to produce power. But if your seat's not at the right height, that can cause a lot of issues as well with the comfort of the seat. I have found when people ride with their seat too low that you tend to sit on it a little bit harder, puts more pressure on that seat and it's just not quite as comfortable. On the flip side of that, if your seat's too high, you're struggling then to reach the bottom of the pedal stroke. So if you're struggling to reach the bottom of your pedal stroke, what do you do? You either point your toes or your hips start rocking. So what happens when your hips start rocking? They're not being, um, they're not sitting soundly, firmly on the seat and that can cause, cause issues. And then the next, the next thing that I always look at and try to make recommendations is that you're wearing suitable shorts or bibs or cycling clothing. There's a lot of different brands out there. I'm not going to say one brand is better than another. Some, many of you have found a brand that works better for you, but a good quality cycling short or cycling bib makes a world of difference. That's not a fix for a poor fit, because if your fit's not right, you can, you can do all the different things you want to try and make, uh, try to help, you know, try and make things better, but it's, um, it's gotta be, you've gotta have a good quality short. You want them to fit you, 
not overly tight, but not too loose. I've, um, I like the fit to be close to your skin. Cycling shorts are made out of a, a stretchy lycra material. It's designed to wear close to your skin. If it's too loose, the chafing I was talking about, that can cause issues you know, as you're pedaling, um, either in the front or in the back. I've had customers that have come in that I dealt with and had issues getting their seat in a good position. We finally got them in a, a position where they things felt great and they're enjoying riding. And I got a call from this guy six months later saying, Cynthia, I'm having saddle issues again. I'm thinking, what's wrong? Did he take his bike in and to a shop and somebody moved his seat? Well, he walks in and this gentleman who was probably five, six or five, seven, had lost 30 pounds, which is a lot for somebody of that height. And he was still wearing his large shorts and he hadn't, and his seat was still at the same height. So 30 pounds, he lost a little bit of adipose tissue on his undercarriage. So his seat needed to be raised a little bit. So he lost a little bit of his bum. So we needed to raise his seat up a little bit. His large shorts that he was swimming in was causing chafing and, and the chamois wasn't fitting him under on his underside correctly. So we got a seat to a better height. We got him in a pair of medium shorts and he was happy again. So things like that, weight loss, weight gain can affect if you suddenly have something going on, weight loss or weight gain can, can certainly affect the comfort of your bike fit. And then the last thing I like to talk about that could help is chamois cream. Now chamois cream is a good complement to a good fit. And it does have a purpose and it does help to protect that area. Most chamois creams are, uh, have a moisture barrier in them so that we don't, you know, sweat doesn't make them wear, wear away or wash away. Um, but they're, they're a complement to a good fit. Don't be like my, I shouldn't even say my husband, but somebody I know that um, when I first met him, it seems like he went through a tube of chamois cream a week, um, just lathering it on something wasn't quite right with the, the bike fit. A uh, little trivia question for you. Do you know why it's called chamois cream? And I've had people pronounce that word. Do you see it, chamois? I've just heard, had people pronounce it chamois. Maybe that's the French pronunciation. Chamois, chamois, whatever. Chamois cream. Well, do you all know what a chamois is? If any of you wash your own car, I use a, a, one of the leather chamois to dry it with and when um, to dry my coat to wipe the water off. But that leather chamois is a real, real thin piece of leather. And um, when it dries, it's very hard and, and stiff. And so when I'm drying my car, I have to wet it off and then wring it out. Well, did you know that shorts, cycling shorts used to be made with that leather chamois as the pad? So before our modern technology with synthetic materials and gel and the, our, the current um, chamois or, or cycling pad that was actually made out of leather. So chamois cream was developed to put directly on the chamois to keep, to soften it up before you got on your bike. So it would soften it up. So it felt a little bit better against your skin. The other thing I did not point out about uh, cycling shorts, if any of you are new riders, the, the hardest thing for people to understand and the, mo the biggest thing that maybe new riders haven't been told is that nothing comes between you and your chamois. So when you're wearing cycling shorts, cycling specific shorts, you don't wanna wear undergarments under those because that can create an additional layer and seams and um, pressure in places that you don't want it. So that your cycling shorts are designed to be next to your skin. Be, wash them after every ride. That's the biggest, um, they, can, they can create yeah, that can gather bacteria. The other thing I'd like to tell people is, especially if you're a new cyclist, as soon as you get done with the ride, take those sweaty shorts off and put on some dry clothing. Now, if, you're the, if you've been doing like MS-150 training rides and you're driving out an hour away from town and, and the only thing to change in is a porta potty, I don't like to change clothes in a porta potty, but get good at either putting a, a I wrap a big beach towel around me and I've been able to not flash anybody and change in the parking lot, but getting that, that sweaty chamois away from your skin because that sweat 
and moisture that's in that chamois that's being held in that chamois when you stop sweating can create bacteria of that bacteria that's next to your skin. And so that can be a, a cause of ingrown hairs or pimples and, and, and create saddle sores. So always, always try to get out of those as soon as you finish your ride. And then the other thing I'd like to tell you, shorts, cycling shorts, I know if, as a new rider, they seem very expensive, but it is an investment. But the more you invest in those, the better and happier your undercarriage is going to be. So you don't have to buy the $200 shorts. They are nice. They're a lot, and they, the fit and fabric is, is uh, an improvement, but at least spend $100 on your cycling shorts. You'll, you'll appreciate them so much more and a pair that fits you properly. Um, I didn't mention at the beginning, if any of you have questions, because I know I'm going through things pretty quickly. If any of you have questions, feel free, because we're not letting you talk back to me, feel free to type those questions. And then um, my help, that my, our helpers here will read the questions to me and we'll be happy to answer a few questions at the end. But you know, if, I, if I've just posed, uh, instead of giving information that's just caused, uh, cause more questions to arise, just feel free to type those up and, and we'll get to those at the end. So I, I put in a picture of a before and after fit. And with this young lady, I, a lot of things were going on. She definitely was having saddle issues and we got her to where the seat was at much better height. It, if you look on the right is her before picture and on the left is after. So her seat's a little higher. I just hold it backwards. Her seat's higher, her back and spine are straighter, um, and, and she's able to soften her elbows and get to the, the front of the, the bike. This is not on one of my slides, but one thing I do see people do when they're having soft tissue issues, they start rolling their pelvis in the wrong direction. And if your pelvis is like, if you're tucking under, trying to keep the soft tissue off the nose of the saddle, what happens is you're, that's gonna rob you of power. Your glutes are just gonna hang there. And we want our glutes to work together with our, our quads to generate more power. We all, I mean, some people are like, I don't care if I'm fast, I just wanna be comfortable. That's okay, if you're comfortable, you're gonna be going to be faster. But if you sit on that seat properly, most likely, and if you get the, your seat in the right position and um, to where you're comfortable and not having to move around a lot, you should find that, that you can ride longer, you, can, you end up getting faster, and certainly enjoy the ride instead of dreading looking at that bike and thinking, oh no, my friends want me to go ride, I have to go ride. I want you to enjoy your bike. Look forward to getting on it instead of dreading that next ride. So that's in a nutshell, some of the issues that I see people, um, that people have with their seats and some so, and things to look for as to what might be causing those issues. Basically here in the studio, I'd like to tell you a little bit about what we do here in the studio. Our fit, my fits are by appointment. They take between two and two and a half hours. And so I schedule, I don't always have the same days off every week. So I do work some weekends. So we do some fits on the weekends but we start with an interview. I wanna hear what issues you're having with, with your cycling. I wanna know what kind of riding you do. Are you riding 10, 20 miles around your neighborhood? Are you an Ironman and you're, gonna, you're training for that next, um, next event where you're out training to do a 112 mile bike ride? Triathlete, mountain biker, road biker. And I wanna know what kind of riding you do. I wanna know what your goals are. So. You know, it's like, okay, I just want to be fit. I just want to have fun on my bike. That's, that's great. But if I know that you're training to go do a long distance endurance event, that, that's going to affect how I fit you. And then I'd like to hear about any injuries you've had too, because that can affect your bike fit. So after, after we go through the interview, I'll do a physical assessment, which I mentioned, I uh, alluded to that a little bit earlier. And I'm not a doctor. I'm not a physical therapist, but I am going to look at the width of your, I'll have you it and let me measure the width of your sit bones. I'll look at your foot structure, flexibility, range of motion. Look at your body structure, spine. I do also chest leg length. And that's something I didn't touch on with my fit. If you have a leg length discrepancy, that can affect your saddle. If you have one sit bone that hurts worse than the others, it's possible you have a leg length discrepancy. 
And then after the, the physical assessment, I'll get you on your bike. We perform a dynamic bike fit using retool motion capture. So we put eight sensors on your body, on um, eight points on each side of your body that will measure all of the angles. It also measures dynamically and in 3D. So I'll know how much track uh, your knee is tracking back and forth. You've seen people whose knees don't work like pistons, they roll at the top or come out. It will measure that. And then there are what, what we will do is start addressing all of those um, things that are not quite right. Get your seat in the right position, work on what's going on with the foot that causes your knees to, to, to go out. And then you'll get a detail. So we'll make, let, hopefully let you leave here with your bike all ready to roll and, and go enjoy the ride. And then I do a follow-up visit and about three to four weeks after after your fit so that you can, um, so I can see how you've settled into it. And then in addition to that, you'll get a full printed out report that, that will, a nice professional report that'll be emailed to you. So that's in a nutshell what we've got going on. So I'd, um, if any of you have questions or if any of you are interested or have more questions or more interested in the studio, my number is there on the last, if that slides up. My phone number's there, my email is there. You can call the studio. If you would like to book a fit and you're interested, just for you for attending tonight, we have a coupon of $50 off. So I'd, I'd be happy to extend that offer to you, $50 off at a custom fit studio. So are there any questions? So the question is, what are my thoughts or do I have an opinion on the buy saddle adjustable saddle? I've seen those. I have not done a lot of work with them, but I have seen them and done a little research on them. I think um, in theory, it's a great idea. I do think it's a little heavier saddle. So those of you that are weight weenies about your bike, you might be concerned. Uh, what it is, it has adjustability so you can make the back I th and I, the way I understand it, the, it works and the nose might get narrower as the back gets wider, but there's adjustability for the width. I think it's in theory great and you can kind of find out what width might work for you. The, you know, anytime something's adjustable, it's designed to kind of fit a broader range of people, whereas you could probably determine what saddle width you need and then buy that right the correct saddle and it would be probably maybe a little bit more comfortable because it would flex a little bit more underneath you good question three deep okay the next question is and i don't know if they can hear what she's saying the next question is what are my thoughts on the 3d printed saddle um they're hard to find right now. That's my first thought because uh, everything in the cycling industry has been, um, we sold so much inventory last year that manufacturers can't keep up and we're having difficulty getting inventory. But I like them. I have had good success with them. They are pricey. They are very pricey. Uh, but the, the customers I have worked with with the, those saddles are very, very happy with them. They're, they're a little, they mold to your undercarriage a little bit better. Um, and I, so they're soft. So a little softer, it molds to your undercarriage better. If they still need to be the right width and the right shape and the right seat for you. I have had um, a lot of success with my gravel riders, so with gravel being so, becoming so popular and what, you know, somebody that comes from a roadie background that's now starting to ride gravel, they're not quite as used to the bumpy roads as what maybe you mountain bikers might be. So a saddle that has a little bit more give to it. So it's going to give a little bit, which can, can end up being more comfortable. Thank you. Yes, of course. So the last question or next question is the pricing on bike fits. So it is... I have explained what you get for the fit. I have been doing this for many, many years. We have performed probably over 3,000 fits. I probably do at least 
five to seven hundred fits a year. I go back for continuing education. We use state-of-the-art technology. And so we're not the cheapest. I'm not, not going to lie to you. We're not the cheapest. But my road bike fits are $349.99. And tri fits, simply because tri bikes have a lot more adjustability with the aero pads and aero extensions uh, and getting the front end dialed in, they it takes a little bit longer. And those are $399. And again, that all includes a full report and a, and a follow-up visit. So thank you, good question. One more question, another question? The, 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 la the next question was, do we have saddles that can be rented or demo saddles that you can try out since saddles are so expensive? We don't have rental saddles. We do have a limited amount of demo saddles. You see the ones behind me that are different colors, which we now have those available for sale. Those are some demo saddles that can be, uh, with a deposit, you can try. Anyone who does a, a custom fit, I make a recommendation on a seat based off of, like I said earlier, the, the width of your sit bones, the sp your spinal shape, and then getting it in the right position. When you, and I'll put it on your bike, I'm gonna put, make a recommendation on the seat and I put it on your bike. And we, I usually know just by looking at your face when you first get on it, if it's gonna work or not, because seats are, um, it's a very personal thing. Now I understand that in here in the studio on a trainer, it feels different than when you go out and do a two hour gravel ride. So most of our products have a comfort guarantee. And I always, with my customers, let you know that if you purchase a saddle from me, it feels great in here in the studio, you go out on a ride and it's like, oh my gosh, it wasn't quite what I thought it was going to be or it didn't work out. We'll get you back in, I'll either do more tweaking or we'll try another seat. So as long as you don't crash it and it doesn't come back totally messed up, if it, you know, I'll, I'll take it back and we'll try something else. So great question, I appreciate that. Well, thank you all for coming this evening. I hope that we answered some questions or um, gave you a little insight on how your seat can be comfortable and that you do not have to put up with. Okay, there is one more question. Okay. Uh huh. The knees are still hurting too. Got two things. Okay. That question was somebody had a fit and now they are having, let me make sure I understand, I heard this right. Now they're having tailbone pain. What would I suggest? They're having tailbone pain and knee pain. Um, so your tailbone, can you hand me the pelvis that's up there? Yes. So right now, is it still on questions or is it just on me? Can you see? Can y'all see the pelvis? Tailbones don't, should not be supporting your weight. When we sit on a seat, it is our ischial tuberosity, bony structure here. And, and most of us, if we're on a hybrid, our pelvis is gonna be like this, we're sitting in a chair. If we're on a road bike, we roll forward. On a tri bike, we roll more forward. But it shouldn't be tailbone pain. What can cause tailbone pain could be the shape of your saddle and or there's tendons um, or ligaments that run across that area, muscles too, that can pull and, and that can cause uh, pain in the, the end of your coccyx. We don't want that to happen. So without seeing you, it's hard to, to say what could be causing that pain. Knee pain, if it's just one knee, that's an issue. If it's both knees, that's still an issue. But uh, you're, if, if you paid for a fit, um, you should contact the person who fits you and see if you can get back in for a follow-up visit. That would be my recommendation. It's not, no, knee pain is a whole different uh, 
clinic or, or you know, clinic that we do, and there's lots of issues and lots of causes for knee pain. But tailbone pain, if you actually do mean tailbone as opposed to sit bones, um, it could just be if you're using too soft of a saddle too, that you're sitting in it too much and it's, it's pushing on that, or you're not rotating your pelvis correctly. There's a lot of things without seeing you that um, make it difficult to, to, to say what's causing that pain. Okay, that's our last question. We kept you a little bit longer than I wanted to, but um, I appreciate everyone coming. I appreciate your questions. Again, if you've got, if I just made um, mud of the waters here and, and didn't answer your questions, feel free to shoot me an email, studio at bikebarn.com, or give me a call at the studio. Now, when I'm with a customer, with, if I'm working with an athlete, I don't answer the phone, but I'll get back to you as soon as possible and try to address your issues. But we'd love to see you uh, come in for a bike fit. Thanks so much and, and go enjoy riding your bike.